Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. My name is Lucian G Kaiser and today I am going to be reviewing the Bandai Tamashi Nations DX Chagokin YF19 from Macross Plus. One of my favorite Macross anime out there and this figure is exceptionally high quality and I absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the figure, all the mechanics behind it, and the G Kaiser Age Fig Mechanics Review. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with a, taking a look at the actual fighter mode of this figure. I purchased this figure from Ami Ami. Once again, a fantastic website. If you want to get any kind of anime, gaming, merchandise from Japan, they're definitely the place to check out. And the moment I got this figure out of the box, I realized there was the detail was even more exceptional than what I'd seen in all the pictures I had been looking at of the figure ever since it was first announced. As you can see, all of the, of course, decals on here aren't actually decals themselves. They are basically printed directly onto the plastic and the die cast metal parts on this figure. And they are just a ton of them and they all look fantastic. Nice and clean application. And they seem to actually hold up very well. None of them have rubbed off so far during all the times that I've transformed the fighter. And as you can see, even though I have transformed this fighter several times, all the parts are still fitting nice and tight. That's something I've noticed on some of my other Valkyries, is that after transforming them once or twice, some of the parts don't quite fit as tight as they did the first time. But this one is an exceptional mechanical design on it, and I absolutely love it. And as you can see here on the underbelly, it's still a nice streamlined design. There's not a lot of, of course, uh, kibble or anything showing. And of course, yeah, the landing bay doors are a little bit looser than I would like, but that's still not too bad at all. You can see all the extra detail on the bottom here. It'll get nice and closed for you. And that new gun pod design, the old gun pod design apparently was just one stiff gun pod and because of the angle of it, it would hit the ground when it was uh, had the landing gear out and was sitting on the uh, actual table with the landing gear deployed. So with that new bend in it, it fits a lot better underneath the fighter. The only problem I have had with mine so far has been one of the tail fins actually has looks like a manufacturing defect on it. Now the ailerons towards the front are much more solid than previous ones. As you can see I was just tapping on it there for a minute and it didn't move out of place until I really pushed hard on it. And I really appreciate that and it snaps back into place. And this is that tail fin that I'm talking about. It's staying on there pretty well when I'm handling the figure, but when I'm transforming it, it tends to pop off quite easily, which is kind of disappointing, but not a deal breaker. Everything else is so fantastic. I absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and move on and check out some of the other features of the fighter mode as well. So let's go ahead and put the landing gear back in. Now the front landing gear does fold in half to fit back into its spot. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but once you get it in there, the bay doors hold down nice and tight. And you don't have to worry about them popping up when you're either transforming or handling the figure. And I really appreciate that. You just gotta make sure that you fold in the landing gear completely. And there we go. The rear landing gear are just one solid piece themselves, as you can see here. And they just fold in nice and neat and easy and lock into place as well. And there we go, and a nice smooth figure. As you can see, as the tail fins, they are easy to fold and move out of place, but they stay in place very well when you're handling the figure itself, not too bad at all. All right. Now, as you can see, I just love every bit of the detail that they have on this figure and all the markings and everything. And of course, it comes with a display stand that can be configured into 
holding the figure in its different modes, whether it be fighter mode, whether it be jerwalk mode, or whether it be batroid mode. All in all, you are gonna love all the exceptional detail on this actual figure. And just all the markings, the warnings, the, of course, names of the pilot, and just everything that are on here just make it a fantastically detailed Macross figure. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Batroid mode, as that's the next mode with the most features on the fighter. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the Batroid mode. And I have to say the transformation was very smooth. At first, it was a little confusing on some of it because there are some internal parts that have to be configured around. But once you do it once or twice, it is actually a very smooth and easy to perform transformation. A lot easier than I can say about the SV262 from Macross Delta, but that'll be for another review. As you can see though, the detail on the fighter, or in the Batroid mode I should say, is just as fantastic as the fighter mode. Everything fits in nice and tight. You have a lot of great detail. You even have these, I didn't realize that there were actually Vulcan cannons on the chest. And then the head here, you can actually rotate around. The head fend of course moves back and forth. Not a huge range like some head uh, lasers on some of the other Valkyries, but still very admirable. The arms of course can do a complete 360 spin. And they have a nice double bend with a bit of an extension at the elbow and the shoulder. So that way you can maneuver the arms a lot easier in all the different, uh, in this mode and of course in the jerwalk mode. You've got, of course, the elbow swivel. And this is probably the one of the cool things is these really detailed hands. I love the hands. And they're all on their own individual ball joint. And of course their own hinge. So that way you get a nice bend on those two. And for once, the actual perfect transformation hands aren't super deformed. They're actually really good hands. I'll show them off a little bit later. But for right now, you've got of course the swivel at the upper thigh, standard for most Valkyries. Especially useful for, of course, jerwalk mode. And yeah, pull these little knee panels forward a little bit so we can get the bend in. I love how they fit so flush to the leg, you don't think that they expand out. Now, the interesting thing about the hip connector is it is very, very stiff on this figure. It's still stiff on mine, even after transforming it and maneuvering it around. So it can take a little bit of work. Be very careful with this figure. There are a lot of tight fitting parts on it. But as you can see, you've got a really nice knee bend. And once again, that's because of the jerwalk mode needs that. It's got a quarter of a bit of more of a forward bend, but we'll save that for the jerwalk mode. And then of course the foot, as we come down here, has a nice bend, of course, at the feet. And it's got a nice side to side. Now the actual swivel is extremely stiff. I th first I was afraid I was going to break the figure. So I had to wobble it for quite a while before I could get the actual swivel. And I have to admit, I'm glad Bandai made it this tight. But I also worry myself after the time when I'm maneuvering the figure. And then the legs, this is cool. They actually have the opening side panel for the missiles that you see Isamu shoot at gold when they're arguing about who owes how much from back when they were in high school. Which I absolutely love that scene because Isamu's like fires two missiles at gold and gold's like, well, I bought you lunch like 21 times and fires like a whole burst of mini missiles at Isamu. It was just a fantastic scene. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely watch Macross Plus. If you're watching this video without having watched that first, <laughs> take a pause and go watch it real quick. It's a great anime. All right, so here we have 
the actual, of course, barrier system used as an actual physical attack on the fighter. I absolutely love this. And it's just a great effect part. You just simply take off the hand and replace the hand with this effect part. And it just makes it even more awesome. It makes me really, really, really want Bandai to hurry up and announce a YF-21 DX Shogokin. Because this figure deserves to have one on the shelf next to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other features in the Batroid mode. So now, let us go ahead and take a look at this and this is a special arm armament fast pack that was developed just for the YF-19 as a test bed for additional weaponry and it wraps around of course the uh, right arm of the Valkyrie itself and so we're going to go ahead and attach that on there just going to close up the panels and the cool thing is you can fold it up and attach it to the bottom of the fighter mode and also attach the gun pod on it and we're going to show that off a little bit later but for right now let's go ahead and put this on the arm so you can see they got the tabs and the peg holes on the arm there and it fits nice and tight and flush just got to line it up there we go and then you wrap it around and around again and then just lock it in place at the top and there we go and that's with it in of course the stored mode and then you just start pulling out these they're a little bit tricky to pull out but once you get it there are basically weapons hidden inside each of these panels and coverings so you just pull the barrel out for this one this is one of its main weapons here. This is a large bore cannon. And then at the bottom side on the other part of the arm is a five tube missile pack. And we just pull this out, slide it back. And I really love the fact that they worked in the mechanics of the panels that cover these weapons, locking into place on the arm so they don't just flop around everywhere. And then the last part are a pair of, or I should say a double barrel beam cannon. This one's a little bit more tricky than the other ones to position because you have to pull the cannons out and then push this piece down and then attach it. But once you do, you get that fantastic look right straight out of that scene. Now this was only shown actually one time in the entire OVA and it was like a 10 second scene. But apparently that large bore cannon was so powerful that it actually burned through the center body of a Mac 2 monster destroyed. And it was like the coolest thing. I was like, oh man, that's so awesome. So I'm glad that they included that with the fighter. And of course, we're going to go ahead and throw the other fast packs on here. So you get, of course, the ones for the legs, the one for the left leg, and then we got the one right here for the right leg. And they just pop right on, very nice and tight. And then I'm going to show you something really cool in just a second after we get this other one on. So once you've got them snapped on nice and tight, if you work it just gently, you can still pop out the hidden missiles on the legs and show those open and you can do this in fighter mode you have to unclip the wing and then move it out and then clip the wing back in that's the only downside because of where the uh fast packs peg in with the wings now of course these are extra thrusters that get attached to the back of the legs here attach this one they're a little tricky to attach but i'm glad bandai actually imprinted on them an l and an r for the left or right leg so that way you don't get confused as to which leg they're supposed to fit on. And there we go. And we got both of those snapped on. And then the final part are going to be these conformal propellant tanks for the shoulders. And of course the ones with the legs are really well done, but these snap onto the shoulders and they actually conform to the body when it's in fighter mode. 
and that basically adds some extra thrusters and a little extra propellant within them as well. All right, and there we go. So this is just a fantastic looking figure with the Batroid mode. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the gun in the gun hand. It comes with two gun hands, one for the right and left arms. So if you have the armed fast pack on the right arm, because it blocks the where the, the gun would actually be on it, you can go ahead and attach it to the left arm. I always find it's easier. You don't have to pull the shield off, but I always find it's easier just to pull the shield off when you're putting the gun on the other arm. And then you just pop it right back on with the pegs there. A little harder to line up sometimes. There we go. And perfect. I just love it. Everything about this figure is just so well designed. Bandai really, really went out of their way. Now, I know there was an older design of this, the VF-19 that they did for the Macross Plus, um, or sorry, Macross Frontier movie by having it show up in a certain scene in there which was really cool. So now let's go ahead and go over to the Jer walk mode and take a look at that. All right, and now we have the Jer walk mode. Now this mode, there's not gonna be too much to talk about aside from just the stability of it. It is extremely stable in this mode, and I absolutely love that about Valkyrie figures when they are stable in this particular mode. Once again, the arms are very maneuverable. They actually have an extra extension at the shoulders, so that way you can easily move the arms into different poses. So you can see all the detail and everything on the figure. It holds up very solidly in this mode. There's no loose parts or anything that I have seen, aside from, of course, again, that one tail fin that likes to really pop off sometimes when I'm moving the legs around on the Guardian mode. Once again, the, of course, missile launchers can be exposed in this mode. Sometimes a uh, fast pack panel will pop off. Just easy enough to fold the missile port out and put the fast pack panel back on right after you folded it out. So you just attach that right on there. And excellent. And so you can still have that exposed even in the Jer walk mode too. Absolutely love every design choice that they made with this figure just makes it so you can recreate pretty much any scene that you can name from the actual OVA. As you can see, there's a nice range of motion on the arm, so he could be blocking a shot with the arm with the shield here. Let's put that right there. And then you can pull over the other arm, and this is really cool. It can actually move high enough and forward enough that it can shoot over top of the back of the fighter. So that is some great range of maneuverability on those arms. And then of course with the engine covers, those can be pulled off. They're really tight on this figure. I've definitely got to get something with a nice plastic cover to pull them off with, but you can see the inner engine detail there for the intake fan. That's the same thing for the other vent. But we're going to go ahead and put this one back on. Now, 
we're going to be taking a look at the accessories that the actual figure comes with as well on the next part of the video here so let's go ahead and start taking a look at the huge amount of other accessories that are mainly for the fighter mode of this Valkyrie alright so now we're gonna take a look at one of the big time accessories the fold booster so it comes with the special attachments so that way you can attach it to the actual fighter you've got these little peg holes now these peg holes are extremely tight it took me a little bit of time working with them to make sure this would plug in nice and neat but after that you just attach the main fold booster directly to the struts and it stays nice and tight in place and it looks fantastic and as you can see I've got the fighter in fighter mode with of course the fast packs on so you can see the ones from the shoulders are attached to the top and then you got the ones on the legs of course and then here is the arm fast pack weapon set and you just attach the gun pod to it with a special little attachment bar that it has on built onto it and it just goes right on there and I absolutely love it and then of course it fits right on the stand without any issues even with the fast packs on because the stand is just designed perfectly to fit it with the fast packs or without the fast packs on the figure And now we're going to go ahead and put Isamu's co pilot in here. We got Mr. Jan, who was, of course, the designer and a heavy duty programmer and hacker. And he has his own spot right in the cockpit, right behind Isamu, just like at the last OVA of the actual anime. I really love the detail on both of their figures. Let's just close this up. Alright, and now let's go ahead and take a look at the other weapons that this Valkyrie comes with. Alright, so it comes with some of the standard air-to-air -air move missiles for long-range air-to-air combat. And then it also comes with uh, micro missile pods and heavy long range anti ship missiles. And of course, the new version high maneuverability missiles designed specifically for taking up other Valkyries. And last, but definitely not least, you also, of course, get some reaction missiles in there, too. And you can mount all of these on these pylons, as you can see, in different configurations. You can either do a set single weapon, or you can do two different weapons, or, of course, you can mount just, of course, two of the same weapon on there. So let's go ahead and mount these on the wing. There are clips underneath each wing. There's three sets on each wing. And once you've got the clip location that you want to put it in, you just push it in. Now some of these fit really tight, so I do recommend being very careful as you're putting them into the wing clip area. But once you have them on there, they look absolutely fantastic. And the fact that you can configure different ones just makes it so much more fun to play with. And let's go ahead and clip this one on. Oop. And some of the missiles seem to like to pop off sometimes when you're putting them on there. But for the most part, they pretty much stay on there nice and tight. And they just slap right back on the stand there. And that is just great looking. Of course, I've got a mismatch of missiles on there, but that's just to show how they look on the actual wings themselves. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick little comparison between this fighter and another Macross Valkyrie I have and show off another little quick little special feature. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my VF-31 for Macross Delta. And I want to show all you guys who actually already have a VF-31 that you can actually put the missiles from the YF-19 on the VF-31 as well. So you just flip it over. It's got the same type of attachment ports on it as the, as the YF-19. And as you can see, I've got a missile already lined up with a missile, our micro missile pod. And just attach that right into that same spot. And it'll click right in. And let's go ahead and throw some other missiles on this guy. Put another micro missile pod on there. And we'll put some of the uh, long range air to air missiles on there as well. All right, perfect. And I was so happy to find out that they designed these to fit with all their other previous DX Chagokin Valkyries for the Macross Delta series. I don't have any of the other ones like from the uh, Macross Frontiers, Frontier series, so I don't know if these would fit on there or if they have the ports for them to fit on. But still, it's fantastic that these are compatible with the VF-31 series. And as you can see, both planes look awesome together. All right, so once again, I definitely highly recommend if you guys can get your hands on this particular Valkyrie, go ahead and grab it as soon as possible. I'm pretty sure the collector's prices on this are going to be astronomically high once they're out of stock. I'm not sure when more will be in stock, but definitely check out some of the big name websites. I know Hobby Link Japan had some coming in stock. I know Ami Ami had some. There's also several other Japanese third-party retailer sites where you can order things from Japan that they will ship to you. So I definitely recommend checking them out as well. But once again, this is Lucian G. Kaiser from the G. Kaiser Age. If you love Macross, leave a comment and definitely like and subscribe to my channel here. And uh, let me know what your favorite Macross Valkyrie design is, your favorite Macross figure, things like that in the comments. And as always, definitely keep an eye out on my Facebook, my Twitter, and of course check out my Twitch page where I'll be streaming on there soon. Once again, this is Lucian G. Kaiser from the G. Kaiser Age, signing out until the next Macross Battle.